Good morning. Um, so um, if you guys watched the video that I did on filling the five-sided surface with Geometry Works uh, 3D features, you'll see that I started with this exact uh, layout and we used the plugin Geometry Works 3D to put two four-sided patches in. I figured I'd do a version that uses just native SolidWorks uh, features because I realized that not everybody has the uh, Geometry Works plugin. But um, if you haven't watched that video, um, this is the result that we came up with and it's it's quite uh, clean surface geometry with nice flow uh, and very few features and, and good service quality but um, let's see what we can uh, create with just regular SOLIDWORKS using the same technique essentially so these are the same two points that I've positioned at 29% uh, from the edge which gives me eight millimeters from this point to that point and from that point to that point which is the same as the eight millimeter chordal fillet that i have in here and so the next thing i did was build blend curves from here to here and uh, native solidworks doesn't have a blend curve so we have to create a little bit of extra reference geometry so we can put a uh, 3d spline in between these things so the first thing i'm going to do is create a couple planes and with this point and that edge so that is perpendicular to that edge. And I'm going to create a second one. I don't want that. Uh, that point and that edge. So I got two reference planes that I can use to create some reference geometry. So I'm going to insert a sketch. And then I'm going to intersect this surface. And so now I have a curve that is that lies on this surface. And so we can make a 3D spline tangent to that uh, curve. And so on the next plane. We're going to insert a sketch, do the same thing, uh, intersect with that surface, accept that. And I'm changed, I like to change them to construction geometry because it is construction geometry. I'm just using it as a reference. And so now I can create two 3D splines, uh, one from this edge to this edge, which can uh, which results in a four-sided boundary here, and then one from this edge to this point and that edge. So insert a 3D sketch, and we're going to use the style spline. I'm using a degree 3 style spline. Uh, it needs four control points, so we have two, two points to control the tangency at either end, and then one section in the middle as sort of the transition in between. Um, so we are going from um, that point. So this is to control the tangency, that's the transition point, and that's to control the tangency on the other end. And so we can make this coincident, or collinear rather, with that edge. And then this guy should be able to be collinear or tangent with that edge. And so now we have a curve in, in 3D space. I want to have this curve to be as evenly um, as possible, and so I'm going to use the equal constraint uh, space these out equally. That gives me a really smooth curve uh, to transition between this and this. Now we can also dimension these so you have control over the shape, uh, but for the sake of the, the tutorial I'm going to use this because it's a little bit faster. And then we're going to create another 3D sketch. Do the same thing, but now we're going from there to there. And we're going to make that tangent. And we're going to make that collinear and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to apply the equal constraint to the uh, control cage and so then we have our second curve and I'm going to use the boundary to build this first feature and the boundary can accept this edge but I like to um, split my edges and you'll you'll see that I've used the same technique in the in the other video if you do a 3d sketch and you convert this edge you can pull back this uh, point and make it coincident and the boundary surface recognizes the 3d sketch as an edge and you can still make it tangent to surface so that's the next thing I'm going to do insert a 3d sketch and we're going to convert that edge and then we're going to pull that back and make that coincident. So now I have a 3D sketch that defines this edge and then I have this edge, this edge, and that edge. And so now I can put a four-sided boundary in between these guys. So let's do that. And we're you can adjust these obviously, but we're going to just use the um, 
standard features or standard settings rather um, to begin with. I'm going to make that tangent and I'm going to make that tangent. Now you'll see with the standard input geometry it's quite wobbly. Um, so if I accept that and I turn on my zebra stripes we have quite a bit of wobble going through there. And one of the ways that you can control that is by increasing the tangent influence. So let's go to there. Still a bit wobbly. That's pretty good actually. So let's set it at 75. So now we have this surface running through there and then we can use this curve to trim that back. Now this doesn't actually lie, let me turn off my zebra stripes for a second. Um, this curve doesn't actually lie on the surface, but I'm actually not sure how SolidWorks does this, but I think it just sort of realizes that it's close to the surface, and it, it, if it's close enough, I found that um, it will allow you to trim that surface, so that's what I want. So then we have, and because that curve is tangent and coincident with these edges, that leaves us this four-sided boundary that we can uh, then fill. Same thing, I want to split this edge up. And so we're going to insert a 3D sketch. And we're going to convert that edge. Convert entities. And then we're going to pull that back so that it's coincident with that point. And again, that leaves us with a four-sided boundary that we can then fill with the boundary surface. Now there's actually other tools that will allow you to fill this as well. And I'm going to build all three of them and just to see what the different results are. So if we go from there to there, and then direction two from there to there, this needs to be tangent to every direction. Now we have really good flow through here. If I accept this result, because all my input curves are, are good, sometimes you can get away with not applying tangency, because if you're, all your curves have good geometry, sometimes it'll just uh, naturally give you a good result, but we're disjointed here, so the surfaces are not tangent. So we're going to have to apply the tangency. And the reason I'm not doing curvature is because none of my other input geometry is curvature. And so we, the best we can hope for is actually tangency in this case. So we've made everything tangent and we have get the same wobble. And so we're going to do the same result. We're going to try to adjust that out. And let's maybe start at 50. You know, and then we have, uh, that went to 52, it's a little bit slow updating. We have some um, wobble going on here, but this is actually a pretty good result. So if I turn on my control point or my zebra stripes, there's a slight mismatch here, but this is actually pretty damn good. Now, this was created relatively quickly, obviously. Hide that. Uh, come on. Select the edge. There we go. Hide that. And I'm going to turn off my points for a second. This creates very similar ge geometry to what I've created in Geometry Works 3D. The, the downside of the native SolidWorks features, in my opinion, is that it creates really dense geometry. So if I select this, you'll see that I have 21 vertices in the U direction and I've got uh, 17 vertices in the V direction. And the more control points you have going through a surface, the easier it is to get wobbles um, and ripples. So I've, I've left open the uh, Geometry Works version. And if we check this one out, we'll see that we only have like seven and eight in the U and V direction. So you have a much cleaner surface. And it subsequently, it's much easier to get good curvature continuity and, and avoid wobbles and uh, ripples and that sort of thing. So that's one version, with the boundary. I'm going to suppress that. The other one is the fill feature. And the fill feature will actually allow you um, to create a four-sided optimized surface through these boundary edges. The, the one thing is that the, um, show that. The, the fill feature does not recognize um, a 3D sketch and then make it be able to make it tangent. So we've got to create a little bit of a helper surface here. So if we take that edge and we extrude that out, turn these guys out, 
in that direction, but I want to go the other way. Um, now I have a helper surface that is tangent to this main surface, which will allow me to use the fill feature, turn off my sketches, and then put in a fill with optimize surface, go tangent. So now I can select that edge, tangent to boundary, tangent, tangent, and tangent. So that puts in this feature. Now this will probably look pretty good, although here you see that it doesn't create a very good result. Um, you know, so, but it is an option to create this. Uh, in this case, it doesn't um, create a very desirable result, so I'm going to suppress that one. Um, the last one is actually uh, you can use loft, and I usually try all three of them um, just because I found that um, they create different results. In most cases, boundary will give the best result, but in some cases, uh, loft will give a quite a good result as well. And so I can already see here that this is probably not going to work out that great, but we can uh, set the tangency to face on edge three, and we can set that to tangent as well. And so if I leave that on, now I can turn that off. Um, it, it creates a surface, but same thing, um, you know, this is pretty bad, has a huge amount of wobble in it. And if I look at my control point distribution, I can see the dip um, in the control points. This is a, a measuring feature of Geometry Works 3D, which, you know, if you don't have the plugin, you don't have that measure feature. But you can see here in the zebra map that this is not a very good result either. So I'm going to suppress that. And then my fill in this case, also not great. So I'm going to suppress that. And so in this case, if I unsuppress the boundary, that obviously gives me the uh, cleanest result and the best looking result uh, with native um, SOLIDWORKS features. So um, there's two ways of doing it, or there's actually a lot of ways of doing it. You can do it with native SOLIDWORKS tools. You can use the Geometry Works plugin. Uh, there's always more ways than one. There might be other ways to solve this uh, really elegantly. Um, if you have suggestions on how to solve this more elegantly, leave a comment below. I'd be curious. I'm always eager to learn uh, new techniques. And um, if you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see um, more videos like this with SOLIDWORKS surfacing techniques, please consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.